Uh, today on Free Field Training, we're going to be talking about white laser technology in flashlights, specifically from the lens, eh, from the lens of public safety, so police, security, firefighting, EMS, search and rescue, those applications. If you from the title came here looking for information on the next torch T10L, we're going to do the tabletop of it at this timestamp. You can fast forward to that. I'm not going to feel bad about it. You can you can save all of the fluff of the actual educational content. If you're looking for a fluff piece about how great the next torch T10L is to convince yourself that you spent the money and that it was a good investment, you're going to need to go find another channel because that's not what we do here. I'm going to be starting off with the technology of white laser flashlights. Uh, where they're at right now, as my understanding and my experience with them, they're going to be talking about what they do for us for a law enforcement, security, uh, public safety, you know, search and rescue background to tell you what they're good at and what they're not so good at. And then we're going to look at the, the T10L itself, our example here today that we're using uh, for this presentation. So white laser flashlight technology, it's, it's not shooting a laser beam straight out the front of the light, at least not in the traditional sense that you get with an LED. So with an LED, you have an LED in the middle, let's say we're looking straight at the light, and then around it you have a reflector, and based upon whether that reflector is smooth or has like an orange peel texture to it, decides whether it's going to have more spill or more spot. So you're going to have a, a tight, on, a, on an LED flashlight, you're going to have a tight spot, and then you're going to have a corona around it. So this is going to be really bright. This is going to be less bright. And then you're going to have spill around that. So you get your traditional flashlight pattern when you point it at a wall, or when you use it at a distance. We use each of these for different things. So with the LED in the middle, on a traditional LED flashlight and then the reflector around it, this is just emitting light, and then this is focusing that light straight forward. Another thing that we see is we'll see the same LED, and then we're gonna have to look at it from the side here. So we've got our light head, we've got an LED down here, and then there's a lens over the top. So this would be from the same angle, your traditional light, your LED at the bottom, and you've got a reflector and just a flat lens up here. You're gonna have a lens at the top, and what this does is as the LED puts out light, in this one it's focusing the light straight forward off the walls of the reflector. In this one, the light is focusing straight forward, and then the lens is also focusing that light straight forward. This is kind of an, an, a way over the top way of looking at it. Now with white lasers, it's a little bit different, and this is fairly new technology. This was just invented in 2015. So, forgive me if I get little tiny details wrong, but the overall picture of it is, with a white laser flashlight, you have the head of the light, you're going to have a lens here at the top, and then at the bottom, you've got a laser that is shooting up at basically a mirror, and it's shooting blue laser at the mirror, and that mirror is reflecting the light down at a phosphorus coating. And this, through processes that I am not going to pretend and bore you with to understand, creates a white light that bounces up into this lens that can focus your white light straight up. That's, in a real roundabout, real high level way, how this works. So what does that do for us? Well, with your traditional LED light, when you try to shine at a distance, you're limited mostly by the size of the light head. So if you get something really big with a huge light head on it, like this, you are going to get much more throw than with a traditional LED flashlight, all things being equal with a smaller light head. What the laser allows us to do is since all the light is going straight out ahead because of the nature of lasers, it gives us a spot that looks pretty much like this. It's just a perfect circle. And it throws all the light, all the light that's coming out of it 
goes to throw. Now, this gives us some incredible throws, uh, even at relatively low light outputs. So this is rated right around 500 lumens, and you would think given the 500 lumens that it's gonna have a certain amount of throw if you're used to traditional 500 lumen flashlights. As you can see in these overlays, it does some things much, much better than most 500 lumen flashlights. In fact, every 500 lumen flashlight I've ever seen. Uh, one thing the lasers do for us is not only do they give us just that spot with no corona and no spill around it, but they pass um, by what some people would call phonetic barriers. We used to call a wall of light. So if you point it past a bunch of road signs, past street lights, at a house with a light on the front, you're trying to shine it into the backyard, you can still see the spot from the white laser flashlight. If you point it at long distance, all your light is going toward throw. So if you point it at a water tower or at power lines, you need to see up into the power lines for whatever reason or up into trees at a long distance, you are going to clearly see what you're pointing it at even at a couple hundred yards away. Not a couple hundred feet, a couple hundred yards away. Now the claims with these flashlights are always 1,000 yards or 1,500 yards or something like that, but in reality, we're not seeing things that are in the spot of something with as confined a beam as this at, at a thousand yards. That's why when you see reviews of these online, you see the, the fluff pieces, it's always the, the tight beam, and then they have to zoom in with, you know, the zoom either on a telephoto lens on a camera, or they're gonna use the hundred times zoom on a, a high-end cell phone in order to confine in and to look at what's in that beam. So you're not actually gonna see things at that distance. But at 200 yards, at 300 yards, you can actually see what's going on with the naked eye, and you can see it with this flashlight. Otherwise, you have to mount it on like a telescope to get the effect of this. So that's the positive. If you're doing a search and rescue application, if you're on a barricade on a house, you say you've got a barricaded uh, gunman in a house or something like that, you're on a forced barricade, and you have to get past those phonetic barriers, you have to get past that that ambient lighting that's blinding you, especially light coming straight off of the house. Let's say there's a spotlight on the house, but you still need to see the back door that's next to it. This will push past it at reasonable distances. If you're 100 yards from the house, it'll push past that floodlight into the backyard, and it'll allow you to see what's right next to the floodlight. And that's a fantastic use for this. Here's the downside of it and why they don't make good duty lights. All you get is the spot. There is no spill. And even when you try to use this, pointing it up at the ceiling of a room to light the room up, you're not gonna get the amount of spill that you think you're gonna get. You're gonna get very, very little spill because that confined beam can only scatter so much. I would love to see someone make one of these with a, a focusable head. I don't know how that would actually work. Or maybe if you were gonna try to use this as an everyday light, maybe you would put some sort of diffuser on the end of it that would allow you to actually get rid of some of that focused light and push it into spill into rooms. So if you were gonna use this for house search, you really couldn't use it very effectively because you're only gonna light small areas of the room. At 15, 20 feet, you're only talking about a spot about yay big. The other downside to lights like this is that there's limited models out there. They really haven't caught on, they're very expensive, and so your options for how they function and the batteries that they use and the pouches for them are gonna be kind of limited. Pouches we're getting better with because there's universal pouches. You've got like taco pouches, things like that. They can adjust to take multiple lights. I haven't really had any problems with finding pouches for any flashlight that I've gotten since we have the taco pouches on our vest at work currently, but there's only so many applications of how these things can be made. So we're going to get into this particular flashlight now, the Nextorch uh, T10L. Nextorch sent this to me. Uh, they asked me if I wanted to look at any of their flashlights. And I said, well, I have, the, I have lots and lots and lots of flashlights. If you watch my channel, you, you know I have a whole boatload of them. But the laser flashlights I've only ever used at trade shows, and normally the ones that are imported for trade shows, because almost all of these are imported that I'm aware of, uh, they come in as either a green-hued laser or a blue laser uh, because they're, they're prototypes of them. And at a trade show, you have a hard time seeing what the spotlight's actually going to do to get an idea of, of what kind of throw you're going to get out of it and some of those, those side effects of having that type of throw. So the next torch, uh, T10L, we're going to look at it tabletop here. I'm going to give you some of the specs of it and basics of how it functions. So in case you came to the video looking for that, you'll be able to see whether this is the UI that you would want to use and uh, the form factor that you would want to use for whatever your application is. Let me take you down to the table here. 
So this is the Nextorch T10L, and here's its original packaging, in case you want to know all of the specs on it. There is, of course, warnings all over it about light and uh, laser light, things like that. The modes here are on the sides and what their specs are for those modes, in case you're interested, are all there. Here's what they say about the flashlight on the back. And here is the highlights reel of what their claims are about the light. It of course comes with a little hand strap type of thing and the UI on it is what's interesting the most. So as you can see, there's our extremely confined beam. If we push down, we get a 500 lumen beam. This isn't super warm. It's not something where like you could see some commercials like, oh, you could fry an egg with this. It's not that warm. It will heat up over time. There's even a little warning on the front that says hot toward the front, but the beam itself isn't super hot. If you push deeper into the button, it gives you strobe. So you get a little bit, just a light touch. You get 500 lumens, push harder, you get strobe. And then on the tail, you get TAC mode, which is, it runs off of the switch. Again, that little bit for high mode and then a whole lot for strobe. Then you have low, which is about 55 lumens. And then if you rotate this little rotator again, you get a medium mode. And then if you rotate it again, you get high mode and it stays on. If you rotate it again, you get strobe mode and it stays on. When I was using this to try to get some idea of how it worked and when I was taking them out to get footage of it, I was just using the light tap high mode. It seemed to be the easiest one to use. I'm not sure about using this uh, in strobe, what type of actual function it would have. I will tell you though that this is extremely bright. You do not want to get hit in the eyes with this on high mode. I'm sure there are warnings all over this thing about you know, don't point it at people's eyes and stuff like that. It is a class 3B laser. It says right on the side, avoid exposure to beam. You're not gonna wanna shine this in your eyes. You're not gonna wanna shine this into someone else's eyes if you care about their eyes at all. Uh, you're not gonna wanna bounce this off of a mirror at yourself. And since it doesn't work really well, splashing the light off the ceiling or splashing the light off the floor kind of limits your options uh, with application. But it is probably the flashlight that comes the closest to using light as a weapon where you could, if you shine this at somebody, if they got it in their eyes, they would have a, quite an aversion to the beam hitting them. It is not super heavy and it is not super big. As you can see from the size of my hands, I have medium size glove hands. And if we compare it to a couple of other common options on the market, here it is compared to the size of an Olight Warrior X. And here it is compared to a Nikkor MH12GTS. Who really comes up with these names? But anyway, you can see they're all pretty much palm-sized lights. This is maybe a little longer, but not as fat as the Olight Warrior X, and about the same length, but a little fatter than the Nikkor MH12GTS. For everyday use, the battery function is actually pretty good. Inside of here is a 5,000 ma, a 21700 battery. It's branded by Nextorch. God only knows who actually makes it, but it is USB-C chargeable. So if you do have one of those uh, fancy cell phones that uses a USB-C, you can use the same charger that you use for your cell phone for this, it also charges pretty fast. There's a little indicator light on top for when it's charging and when it's done. So if you use this somewhere, let's say you are on a search and rescue type of operation and you are out looking for somebody and the light starts going dead, even though it has like a three hour runtime at high, at least that's what they claim, I didn't test it. Uh, if you get through that three hours and it's still running, or let's say you've been using this a bunch all week and you need to charge it, you can put it on charge in the car with the US, same USB-C that you use on a lot of other devices and it charges pretty fast and that is pretty cool. It has a crenulated bezel, at least mildly crenulated bezel with uh, what looks like little ceramic beads on the front is glass breakers if that's the type of thing that gets you hard. And we'll take a good look here at the front of it. You can see that lens I was talking about. It's pretty hard to see directly down inside. I'll probably try to put some overlays in there if I can't get it. It doesn't show up on film here to look down inside and see the little reflector and then the phosphorus around it. And then the, the reflectors on the side and the lens in the front. 
So that is laser flashlights, and specifically with the Nextorch T10L example, I would love to hear what you guys think about the application of these and whether you think they're going to go anywhere or not. Or if you don't think they're ready for prime time, what would have to happen with laser white laser flashlights before you decided to buy in? If they were the same price as modern LED flashlights, what would have to happen with these before you plunked your money down to get a white laser flashlight instead of an LED flashlight? I'd love to hear about all of that. Also, if you have specific questions about what the Nextorch T10L uh, does, or you want to see more beam shots or anything like that, you can message me over Tommy underscore free field training. I try to post things like that up on my story whenever I can so everybody can see about them. That's probably where you would have originally seen the next Torch T10L on the social media for free field training is that I got one of these in about a month ago when I was playing around in my house. One of the most interesting things about these lights is that even in a fully lit bright room, you can clearly see the spot. And that was one of the issues with trade shows and seeing these lights is that they're so bright, it's, it's hard to get a gauge of it because even in a lit room, like this, this room is completely lit and you can see a clearly defined white spot and you shine it at something white and it, it's, it's blindingly bright. Whenever I find something that gives an accurate showing of that, I try to throw it up on the Instagram story, and then if I think of it, I copy it over onto the, the YouTube story. So follow me over there. Any other comments and questions, I'd love to hear from you. Put them down in the comment section down below. Of course, there's gonna be a link to this down there somewhere, and if I find a way to make money off of that link, I will. Until next week, you guys be safe, and take care of each other. Hey, thanks for watching Free Field Training on YouTube. And while you're here, why don't you check out some of these other goofy videos that I've made? Or you could subscribe, or maybe go over to Patreon and see how you can get your name put on the videos like these fine folks over here. All the links are, of course, down in the description. We'll see you guys next time.